For the first Ableton tutorial, I'm going to show you the layout and tracking within Ableton. So basically, it's just going to be an overview of the program and how to get around. So the view that we're looking at right now is the default view, and that's your tracks and your channels. So to add a new channel, if you want a new audio channel, it's Command-T is the shortcut. And if you want to add a new MIDI channel, Command-Shift-T. Learning all the shortcuts is very important. It'll really speed you up in the whole process. Now, we're also going to look at the arrangement view. Now, if you press tab, you'll switch to the arrangement view. And if you press tab again, you'll switch back. The arrangement view basically uh, is where you're going to lay out all your tracks uh, in the form that you want it to progress within the piece. So that's also used for people who do their DJ mixes in Ableton. You use it when you're uh, composing your own music in Ableton. It's very important to know the, dis the difference between both of them and how to use them both. So we're going to get right into it by opening the instruments here and uh, getting a drum rack in on the MIDI. I like to start with the drums. We're going to make it nice and simple. Uh, let's grab a kick. And we're just going to stick with the 808 series just to make things uh, a bit simpler and a bit uh, to speed things up instead of going through all of them finding the ones we really want because after all this is just a tutorial. We're going to go for a closed 808 hi-hat here. We're going to drop them down into this little organizer for our drum rack that we opened up. Very handy. And now for the snare we're just going to have a three-piece drum set. Where's the 808? Right here. And we're going to put that right there. Now you'll notice when you opened up the uh, channel that this little red light came on down here. And uh, basically what that's going to do is that's going to that means that we can uh, record right from this channel and it also means that we can sample off the keyboard what we've picked. So I'm going to start out with just sampling the kick with the C. So right like that. There's our kick, then we got our hi-hat and our snare. So what I'm going to do is instead of recording straight from the keyboard, I'm just going to plug these in manually. As for the drums, we kind of want them to be pretty dead on. And we're just going to do a basic pattern of hi-hats on the offbeats, your kicks on the two and the four, or on the one and the three, and your snares on the two and the four. So it's going to sound like this when we play it. Here's your master tempo up here. Let's just bring it down a little bit to 115, and that's in BPMs. All right, just like that. Now. Let's uh, add a different instrument. Let's get a bass drum, I mean a sub bass in here. So we're going to go into operator. This is the main synthesizer for Ableton that it comes with. can get others using uh, VSTs. We're just going to stick with operator for now. comes with some presets in here. We're looking for sub bass. It's all in alphabetical order. We're going to go down to S, sub modular. Let's use that. going to drop it where it says drop files and devices. And it'll show up. Now notice that the recording light is now on this one because whenever you drop it in, it automatically sets it to record. So like with the drums, if we use the keyboard, we can sample what we've just picked. Now that's a little high though. We want it down a couple octaves. The shortcut for going down an octave is Z, going up an octave, X. So let's go down one octave, maybe one more. All right, we're gonna leave it there. Now uh, let's record this. And instead of doing it the way we did plugging it in, we're actually going to record straight from uh, using our keyboard. So the drums are ready to go, and now when we press the record up here, it's going to create a track here, and that's where we're going to be recording into. Alright, let's do it. Alright, just like that. That worked out pretty nicely. Now we're going to want to edit that since we took a couple bars at the beginning just to get ready. Let's bring it in and let's hear what it sounds like. All right, we got a little bit of a uh, little bit of a something going on up there. So a quick way to get rid of that, let's just shorten it down to these uh, these bars here. All right, so we've just moved it over. All right, so for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the notes so that it only shows the notes that we're using. 
makes it a lot easier to see. And now we're going to grab this one, put it in over here. And there we go. It's nice and smooth now. And that's what we wanted. All right. So now you notice I got to this note view by clicking, double clicking up here. You can also use a shift tab and that'll bring you from your notes to the instrument we're using. So there's where our notes, we want to use the instrument right now. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit wide right now. So let's bring the frequency down on that. All right. And later in the, in the later tutorials, we'll get more about how everything in here works, but we just want to put the frequency of that down a little bit. So now let's add something else. Let's add a piano in there. And instead of using operator, we're going to use a, a, a sampler. So we're going to use a sampled piano. So right here, we've got our grand piano. That's a good one to use that comes with Ableton. And let's hear what it sounds like. You'll notice the red uh, record switched again. All right, so that's a pretty good sound. We'll use that. But instead of using the computer keyboard, I've actually plugged my keyboard in. So if you have a keyboard that has a USB function, you'll be able to do that as well. Go, go up to your preferences here, your MIDI sync right here, and it'll pop up there and it sets the defaults to exactly what you need. So you don't have to change anything. And uh, it's from MIDI from all ins. And you'll notice our Casio keyboards in there. So we're just going to keep it on all ins. And now if I go over to the keyboard, it's also playing there, which is very nice, very uh, simple to use. So now we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to rec record straight from the keyboard instead of plugging it in. All right, so let's see how that turned out. We started right from the front and that first one actually sounded pretty good. So let's see how that works. Take it off record so that we don't accidentally input any notes. And that's not perfect, but for the tutorial, it's going to work out just fine. So we'll close this up, get ourselves organized. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, we want to layer something on top of that keyboard, give it a bit more substance. So uh, the easiest way to do that is to copy and paste clips. But first we want to find a, a different instrument that's going to work well with that keyboard and I'm thinking that some synth strings be perfect. So we'll grab this concert strings here, drag them into the channel here. And since we want them to be the exact same as those keys there, we're not going to record it again. We're going to grab this clip, this clip right here, copy, command C, go over here, command V to paste. And now you'll notice we've got the exact same clip here. But if you press shift tab, we got a different instrument. So let's solo that and see how that turned out. Perfect. And the solo function is very, uh, it's very, uh, very important for sort of uh, being able to feel out the different instruments without having uh, hearing everything. So I'm going to rename that string just so that we don't get confused. And to rename things, just use uh, command R. And if you use command and click on a different solo, we can solo them together. So now we'll see how they sound layered together. All right, and now let's see how it sounds all together. All right, so that sounds pretty good, but there's one thing about this drum rack. Uh, I'm not quite hearing this snare here. It's, it doesn't seem like the right instrument we want. So I'm going to show you how to use the hot swap function, which is uh, very handy when you're trying to find the right instrument. It's this little uh, circle here, and if you look on your information view, it'll tell you all everything you need to know when you're uh, sort of confused about what each button does. So we're going to open up the drum rack again and look for a different snare. So let's see. Got all these to pick from, but we want to hear them while they're playing. So while they're playing, we're going to click this hot swap. And we've got it on what we had, the 808. Let's try the 707. So that's got a bit more, a uh, bit more punch to it. So we'll leave it at that. And that'll work for anything. If you're trying to change the strings here, got your hot swap right there, and it even brings you over to synth strings. 
All right, and next tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our clips and we're gonna drag them into our arrangement view and we're gonna actually make a, a few bars of music out of that. We're gonna learn how to use these envelopes work and uh, eventually we're gonna get into audio effects and that's when your envelopes are gonna get very, uh, very useful. So stay tuned and subscribe and uh, I'll be coming out with uh, the, next, uh, the next tutorial very soon. Thanks, bye.